Our current healthcare model is broken, expensive, and is not changing the health of our society. Patients are suffering from chronic disease and body degeneration without options to escape. They are hopeless and broken. Welcome to Health Ovate with Dr. B. If you're ready to see how you can change your health for the better, you're ready to Health Ovate with Dr. B. Hello, I'm Dr. Joel Baumgartner, but you can just call me Dr. B. Welcome to the show. I am super excited about this segment today. We're gonna be diving into some deep issues on nutrition, but also on weight loss. You know, that's something that has plagued all of us for so long. I have talked to so many patients and clients who are struggling. They're feeling defeated. They're feeling broken down. Because they come in to see their doctor and they haven't lost their weight. We're gonna show you some secrets today that might help you break those plateaus. But even more importantly than that is this whole new global concept of changing healthcare. We're talking a lot about that, is, is redefining healthcare. My personal mission in life is to redefine healthcare and to create health that is available to all people to actually make them healthier. You know, our current system is super broken. We're seeing that health insurance premiums, where are they going? They're going up, but our health outcomes are going down. More people are living broken, helpless lives, feeling in pain and degenerated. But I tell you what, guys, there is hope for you. You don't have to live that way. There are options with your health care. We're going to talk today about the nutrition and dialing that in. What's really neat is once you dial in nutrition, you lose the weight, your body has the ability to regenerate better. And that brings us to a concept on regenerative orthopedics. That's something that we utilize a lot to get people's bodies to heal. Sounds a little Star Wars, sounds a little crazy, but it's true. Research over the last 10 years is confirming we can regenerate the body. How do you do that? Use healing cells like PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, and stem cells, which come from your bone marrow. Now, those cells are constantly trying to heal you anyways. You cut your arm, the body heals it back up. In this situation, we're actually extracting those cells, isolating them in the lab, putting them back into the body in the areas of degeneration to get them to heal. So it's super exciting. Again, today is that foundation, which is the nutrition and weight loss, and that is a health ovation. It's combining innovative new treatments with health care. So today, we're all gonna come together. We're all health ovators. We're gonna health ovate. So until recently, the only treatments available for chronic pain and degeneration were cortisone injections, pain medications, or surgery. Fortunately, advancements in regenerative orthopedics have given us the tools to actually regenerate our broken bodies. Regenerative procedures like prolotherapy, PRP, which is platelet-rich plasma, and stem cell injections can reverse these degenerative processes without the side effects of cover medications or the risks of invasive surgery. The cells used are from your, body's, your body and have a powerful impact on healing and regeneration through the stimulation of your body's natural healing response. So the current system is broken. The current orthopedic model for treating injury, pain, or arthritis uses narcotics, NSAIDs, cortisone injection, and surgery. This is becoming outdated and much less popular as newer, less invasive procedures that use the body's own healing cells like PRP and stem cells are getting traction with sound research and science backing up the positive outcomes seen here in clinical practice. Now the problem with the old model is the side effects, the risk and lack of efficacy with those treatments. First off, narcotics are the number one cause of accidental death in the United States and the FDA is looking at other ways to treat chronic pain. Next with cortisone injections, recent studies show that they actually kill cartilage in joints that are actually already damaged with arthritis. What they're doing is the exact opposite of what we'd like. They actually make the joint more unhealthy and more broken down. Studies also show that cortisone or steroids injected into or around the spine, as in that standard spinal epidural steroid injection, actually increases your risk of spinal fracture by one third for every injection given. Now I see patients every day who are having multiple cortisone injections a year in an attempt to cover up the pain but it's making the problem worse and carries a significant risk. Next, far too many surgeries are being performed each year in the spine and joints that could be avoided if the pain and degeneration was approached from a regenerative perspective. So the big question arises, what can we do to heal, to regenerate? Can we actually turn back the clock? Well, it's time to fix the system. Now, over the last 10 years, PRP and stem cell treatments have come to the forefront as a safe and effective, less invasive solution to treat chronic pain and degeneration of the spine and peripheral joints. These procedures use your body's own healing cells to repair and, yes, turn back the clock in areas of degeneration and breakdown. 
We've had great success treating arthritis of the large joints like the hips and knees, rotator cuff tears, knee meniscal tears, as well as chronic painful con conditions of the spine. What is pretty cool is that these treatments utilize your body's own cells, not cells from another source. PRP and stem cell procedures work through stimulating the body's natural healing response. You know, it's kind of like when you sprain your ankle, right, or you, you cut your arm, the body sends healing cells that actually heal you up. So we're just tapping into the body's own healing response. Kind of sounds a little bit like Star Wars, but science and research have been looking at the body's ability to heal itself for years. People fly in from all around the globe to be treated right here at Reju Medical in Minnesota, and the outcomes have been amazing. It's really one of the main reasons I love to go to work every day, knowing I can truly give hope to my patients who have lost the ability to run, to hike, and enjoy life the way they once did. So the ability to regenerate. Can we turn back the clock? Let's talk about that a bit. I'd like to welcome our guest today. We'll take a deep dive in how we can innovate our approach to orthopedics, what treatments have been effective, and why I love coming to work every day. Our guest today is David. He's been suffering for years with degenerative arthritis in his knee. He had all the current treatments, pain medications, they wanted to do cortisone shots. They said, you know, your next step, it's gonna be a total joint replacement. He wasn't satisfied with that opinion, so he came in to see me after he'd heard a little bit about stem cell procedures. <laughs> and to tell you what, I think he's pretty happy we had met. I'd like to welcome David to the show today. Thanks, Thanks for joining you. us today. Yeah, it's good to see you. It's nice to see you walking without a limp. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great feeling. Thanks again for being here. I want you to kind of go back in time and tell us a little bit about what life was like a year ago before you'd come in and had stem cells on your knee. My life has really changed with activities, work, sports. I couldn't walk upstairs effectively. I couldn't golf anymore. I couldn't ride a bicycle. I had suffered through pain, chronic pain. It was just awful. Yeah, I've been there, I can relate. You know, and a lot of us who are athletes, who are active, we get energy out of movement and doing things, doing sports, competing. When you can't do that, it takes away a part of your life that was once a part of you. you know, that, that's, that's almost as painful as the physical pain you're feeling, as the emotional agony of not being able to do the things you love. How did that affect your life with your family, your friends? Did it affect your ability to, to engage and do those things as well? Oh, absolutely. Started just staying home more, not participating in normal things that I would totally be doing. Right, and that's a good point. You know, I see so many patients coming in and we focus on the joint, but you don't realize that pain makes you apathetic. Pain hurts the soul. It steals away your ability to do things that you love to do. I want to know a little bit about your, your experience with the procedure itself. It's kind of interesting because most people think, wow, stem cells is kind of out there. What is it really like to go through that procedure from kind of the bone marrow harvest and the experience itself? It was fascinating. In one day, the procedure of stem cell was done. The harvest was very simple. It probably took 40 minutes, a little bit of pressure, very little pain. There's hardly any pain involved with that. The afternoon I came back after they had counted up all the stem cells and they had, they had used, um, the ultrasound. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. The ultrasound yeah. to direct the stem cells into my knee. I love that. I love watching the ultrasound too, and I've been doing this for years, but every time I see those little cells kind of coating the joint, it's amazing. And the ultrasound is a tool we use to actually see through the skin so we can guide those injections, make them very precise. If someone's putting a needle into your knee or specifically your spine, you want to know where that cell's going, but it's super fun to me to see those cells coat and actually stick and start to recoat that. And What's neat with some of the research when you look at what does a stem cell do when it's in the joint, the research is showing, I tell my patients this all the time, that you're gonna come back, you'll notice decreased pain, which is great, improved range of motion, and then the MRI studies are showing actually thickened cartilage uh, on the MRI studies afterwards, and another thing to notice is improved quality of life and getting back into the things that you love to do. And with that, the things that you love to do, tell me what it's like now, what is life like now that you've had the stem cells, and he's pretty fresh, he's only about 10 weeks out, are things different yet for you? Oh, absolutely. I started noticing a huge difference in walking, walking up and down stairs normally. I can almost squat now. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's crazy when you think that walking is a gift, right? Like walking. But when you walk in pain every day, when you go to the mall 
and to get groceries is painful and you don't want to do it, this is amazing. I had the same experience once. I was at a conference and I was teaching and I had PRP done on my knee and I was walking on the beach and I'm like, I want to run. So I started running. I ran about five miles with no pain in my knee. So the gift of movement is just such an amazing thing to have back. Now I'm sure a lot of your friends are asking you, you know, what is it like? Do you talk about this to your friends? Do you, do you tell them and share what you did? Oh, I absolutely do. It yeah. is such a great experience and with the recovery time, it's, it was just amazing to me to get through what I've gone through. I have a friend that had knee surgery. He started that before my procedure and he is way behind where I'm at today. That's fascinating. You know, a lot of people don't know the risk with total joint replacements as well. It's, uh, it's sometimes needed and sometimes you have good outcomes. What we're finding is they don't last as long as we thought. That at five years, about 54% of people have their pain back with about 15% having more pain back than they did before. So there are complications and there's things we want to avoid. If there's a, a way to do this without surgery, that is, that is just great. So thank you so much for sharing your testimony today and your experiences. And it really inspires all of us to look outside the box, do something a little bit different. So we come back, we're going to make the rounds. We're going to take some questions from you, the audience, to see what you have on your minds and what questions you'd like answered. Stay with us. I've come to Rejuve to do a non-surgical procedure to take stem cells out and throw that into my knee and hopefully get some cartilage to regrow in my knee. You can actually see it go into your knee and there's, there's a full complete process that's happening and, and that was really easy. Uh, overall, it's been a good experience. Rejuve Medical has changed the face of healthcare. Through nutrition, fitness, functional and regenerative medicine, we eliminate pain and stop chronic diseases in their tracks. More at rejuvemedical.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome back. Today we're talking about regenerative orthopedics and ways that people stop their pain without narcotics, NSAIDs, cortisone shots, and surgery. So let's make the rounds. Now it's your turn to have your questions answered, so let's get to it. Anybody have questions? Yes. Hi, Dr. B. Hi. So it sounds like there are several options for regenerative procedures. Could you go through the differences with me? For sure, yeah. What is super exciting about the field in arthritis is that now there's good research and evidence showing that procedures like prolotherapy, PRP, and stem cells can help with arthritis and even degeneration of the cartilage. It's really become a powerful option for people suffering from debilitating pain, injury, and arthritis of the spine and peripheral joints. All three of these procedures aim at healing the body and not just covering it up. They use the body's natural healing cells, and they kind of act as a catalyst to start that healing process. Then after injections, the body takes over, and we start to heal that area. So the difference between the three, for example, prolotherapy. Prolotherapy, if you looked it up in the dictionary, is the rehabilitation of an incompetent structure through the prolo, or proliferation, of new cells. What you're taking there is dextrose, which is a sugar compound, super safe, no side effects. You concentrate it, inject it into the joint ligament tendon, it makes the tendon think it's injured. So the body then sends healing cells to heal that area up. So you're making little fake injuries and the body heals it back up. With PRP, that's platelet-rich plasma, that one is a biologic, so it involves a blood draw, like you'd be donating blood. We take those cells to the lab. We take out all the cells, including the platelets. Platelets have inside them growth factors. These growth factors then stimulate the body to heal, increase blood flow, increase cartilage formation, so platelets help the body heal. The newest kid on the block then is stem cells. This is getting all the attention just because it sounds super cool, you're getting stem cells. But it's really simple biology with stem cells as well. They start the healing process, they bind to the area, they recode it, and start that healing process. Other questions? Yes. Okay. Dr. B, I've heard about stem cells, but I was just wondering what are the different sources of stem cells that yeah. are available? Sure, good question. So. This is where there's some controversy. Just to let people know, we aren't talking about embryonic stem cells. These aren't coming from an embryo. These are coming from your body's own cells. When it comes to you, we have different places we can take them. We can take them from adipose or fat. 
We can take it from bone marrow, you can take it from the lining of the joints, you can also take it from cardiac tissue. When it comes to orthopedics though, we're talking mostly about adipose and bone marrow stem cells. Between the two of those, what we're finding with research is that the bone marrow, one, are less risky to harvest, but are more effective for treating things like orthopedic problems, cartilage, degeneration, and wear and tear. The other thing to be, make note of is there's a lot of these centers popping up saying they're doing placental cells. And the thing to know about placental cells is they aren't truly really stem cells. When I say that is, when you're getting your own body's bone marrow, it's coming from you, and it's your own cell injected back into you. For me to inject cells from another source or another human or another tissue back into you, we have to treat that tissue before putting it in you to make sure there's no infections or other things in there so it's not contaminated. That treatment process basically kills the cell. So the cell busts open and it lyses. It's, 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 a, it's just a bunch of debris. So an independent study looked at those placental cells under a microscope and there's a bunch of cellular debris. So there might be some growth factors in there, but it's definitely not stem cells. So the warning has been given. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Hi, Dr. B. Hi. Uh, can you elaborate on exactly what the stem cells do when you put them inside of a joint? Oh, for sure. Great question, and I always explain this to patients as well. So stem cells have the ability to repair, but they won't just start doing something unless you tell them to do that. When the cells go into a joint and it sees an injured piece of cartilage, the stem cells bind to that cartilage, and that's what makes them smart. When it binds, it signals that cell to do do start doing certain biologic processes. So the first thing it does when that stem cell binds to that cartilage cell that's injured, it starts to transfer over some stuff. The first thing it does, it transfers over what's called a mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So it's like giving a battery transplant to that sick and injured cell so it's got more energy, can create more ATP for healing. The other thing that transfers over there is a ribosome. So this little ribosome crosses the membrane, ribosome opens up and releases RNA. RNA is the template for making proteins. So then that old sick cell has new fresh RNA from a healthy cell. It can start creating healthy proteins, which can then start regenerating that joint. The next thing that happens is when those stem cells attach, they take the macrophages, and macrophages are like big Pac-Man. They're constantly remodeling things and kind of redoing the body. But the problem with arthritic joints is the macrophages are out of control. They're creating an inflammatory environment, and they start to de degenerate the cells that we want to save. So the stem cells shut down the macrophages, convert them into happy cells, which actually start creating happy proteins again too. So it converts the negative Pac-Man into a happy Pac-Man. The last thing that it does is the stem cells realize, wow, this is overwhelming. I can't do this on my own. So it sends out some signals. It's called paracrine signaling. It's kind of a hormone response that attracts other cells from the body to join in this mission of healing the joint. So it says, hey, come help me. I can't do this on my own. So they're very powerful little cells. Other questions? Yes. Thank you, Dr. B. You're welcome. I was wondering, what type of success have you had treating low back pain? That's a good one. It's one of my, one of my favorite places to treat, you know, because years ago before I had all this ability and skill, I was like, oh, back pain patients were a headache because it was so frustrating to just say, here's a more prescriptions, here's more narcotics, or let's send you for a steroid epidural injection, which we know has side effects. But it's opened a whole way of treating the low back. There's about 32 other sites in the nation that are doing PRP and stem cells at the level we're at, and we're ranking number one in our outcomes with spine. And I think it's for a few reasons. I think the first reason is before I would treat you, I'd say, are you healthy? I would get, we call it cell health. I get your cells healthy, nutrition, exercising, the right supplementation to get you ready to heal. The next thing is how we process those. We actually have a way to process the cells such that we can take out all the layers that have all the different cell types in them. The last thing I would say is the injection technique. Injection technique is paramount because if you don't have good injection technique, you aren't going to get response. I treat doctors all around the world on how to do these. I just got back from Taiwan teaching Taiwanese doctors to be really good at this so they can do this in their patients as well. And I find that not all injectors are created equal. It takes a lot of skill to do this. I call it the biotensegrity technique. That basically means that when you have good technique, you don't just inject one spot, you inject all the areas to make sure that you're getting all the areas tuned up to get that wow home run outcome. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Hey, Dr. B. Hi. I, was, uh, I want to avoid knee replacement. Yes. 
I'm just wondering if these treatments are a good option for me. Yeah, it's a great question, and you remind me a lot of David, you know, about four months ago. You know, pain, the doctor told me I need a knee replacement, what do I do next? The answer is yes. Great outcomes with knees. In fact, that's one of the joints that we have some of the best outcomes. The same thing is it has to be done right. The knee is very complex. It's not a simple joint. A lot of times patients see me and they say, hey, stem cells didn't work for me the first time. Where did you have it done? Well, they just injected it in the joint and they said, hey, see if it works. The problem is you have to inject it very specifically, all the different structures, including the meniscus, the ligaments. Anything that's unstable is going to cause that to wear out faster. So we've got to inject all those things. And after that, we actually have you go home on crutches. We want to take the pressure off so the cells have a, tans- a chance to attach, mature, before you do too much work on there as well. So there's a whole post-procedure protocol that's super important as well. Great questions, you guys. I want to thank you so much for being a part of this. Unfortunately, we are out of time. That's it for today's questions. So if you have other questions on how we can help you, I say check out our website at joelbumgarnermd.com. When we come back, it's time for that gut check. We're going to do a little questionnaire that will help you determine where you're at now and what your next steps are to a healthy, rejuvenated life. We'll be right back. If you suffer from chronic pain, Rejuve Medical is here to give you hope. I was unable to walk much more than a block and a half without very significant right knee pain. Now here I am six months later, uh, able to walk three miles, and I have full function of my knee, leading a very normal life. Rejuve Medical has changed the face of healthcare. Through nutrition, fitness, functional, and regenerative medicine, we eliminate pain and stop chronic diseases in their tracks. More at rejuvemedical.com. Thank you. Welcome back to Healthovate. I'm Dr. B, and I want you to experience healthcare the way it should be. We've been talking about regenerative orthopedics as an entirely new approach to healthcare. And now it's your turn to do a gut check. We put together a little questionnaire for the audience. You're also going to get this at home as well. Let's take a look to see where you're at. Okay, so how did you do? Did anybody answer yes to any of those questions? If you answered yes to all or most of those questions, I have one more question for you. Who wants to start restoring your health today? Anybody? Yeah, so I put together some action points for you. All right, it's time to start health evading. You've waited long enough. So where do you start? What can you do now that's gonna be helpful for your spine and for your joints? Let's talk about some action points. The first thing is exercise. So studies are showing people that exercise, that have strong muscles, strong core, it protects their joints. For example, in the knee, if you don't have any muscle around your knee, there's nothing to absorb the shock. So muscle around your joints acts as a shock absorber and absorbs those forces. Same thing with the spine. A lot of studies on spine, those who have stronger spine and good posture have less back pain. So simple. So we have to start exercising. The next thing is weight loss, right? we have to lose weight. And that's been studied as well. Those that lose weight have less back pain, less stress to the joints. Those that lose weight as well in knee studies have less chronic knee pain. But also adipose creates adipokines. It's an inflammatory problem which creates more inflammation in the body and the joints. So losing weight does two things positive for your joints. What about nutrition? There's a lot of healthy things we can do with nutrition that can help our joints as well. So nutrition's awesome but can also be very inflammatory if you're eating the wrong types of stuff, right? So I put most of my inflammatory patients, knee arthritis, inflammatory stuff, on kind of an anti-inflammatory diet where you're cutting out inflammatory foods. So you want to go gluten-free, whether you have a gluten problem or not, glutens and grains can be very inflammatory. You want to cut out sugar. Sugar causes you to gain weight and can also be inflammatory. A big one is vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is in everything. When we cut out our vegetable oil, we're going to decrease the inflammatory oils 
and we have less inflammation in our bodies as well. So you want to make sure you're eating healthy, unprocessed whole foods that are free of chemicals and additives. Don't feed the fire of pain and inflammation. Now if you smoke, it's critical you quit smoking. When you smoke, your body doesn't heal. That's where smokers, they age so fast. When people come in to see me to get their joints regenerated, I'll say, do you smoke? If they say yes, I say, I won't touch you until you quit smoking because I want my outcomes to be awesome. But they've got to join me on this mission. They've got to quit smoking, eat healthy, because I can't do it all. The next thing I get is a lot of questions on supplements. Well, if you tell me what to eat for supplements, what would you take? I'd say first go lose some weight, eat right, and then let's talk about supplements as another option. But there are some things you can do. There's a new study out there showing taking collagen or bioactive collagen peptides have shown an MRIs to help increase cartilage volume. So that's pretty neat. Another no-brainer is glucosamine chondroitin. It's been around for a long time, but studies show it has a potent anti-inflammatory effect and also helps with pain. So instead of popping the ibuprofen, you could pop the glucosamine chondroitin. Another really potent anti-inflammatory that's getting a lot of press right now is turmeric. Has anybody ever used turmeric? You know, if you read your ingredients on mustard, it's got turmeric in there or curcumin, it's the same thing. Very potent anti-inflammatory, but we've studied it with stem cells. Those that do turmeric actually heal better with their stem cell procedures. Vitamin D is a no-brainer. Vitamin D just helps with bone health, helps with osteoporosis, it helps with strength. So vitamin D, especially here in Minnesota, I guarantee you we're all deficient or suboptimal in our vitamin D levels. Another good one is the omega-3s. Omega-3s like fish oil, krill oil, flaxseed, those are really good. If you get a high enough dose of omega-3, about 3,000 or more milligrams a day, it has a very powerful, positive anti-inflammatory effects. Listen folks, there is hope and there is good news. It's time to avoid prescriptions with side effects that interfere with our ability to heal and repair. It's time to avoid cortisone shot injections to the joints and the spine that can further damage the cartilage and have other systemic side effects. You know, sometimes the body just needs a tip or balance in the right direction to get it healing. Other times you might have to do a little stimulus like PRP or stem cells to ignite that healing response. This is the healthcare of the future. This is ultimate healthcare reform. This model decreases long-term costs of medications, unneeded surgeries, and expensive procedures. It creates a nation that is healthy, educated, vibrant, and inspired. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me here in the studio and at home. Our goal is to redefine healthcare by getting to the root cause of disease and degeneration. I hope that today was your first step to restoring you. I'd love to help you on your mission and your journey. For more detailed recipes and plans to help you, go to my website at joelbumgartermd.com. Until then, let's all healthivate and create healthcare the way it should be. I'm Dr. B, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Thanks for watching Healthovate with Dr. B. For more information about topics discussed in this episode, go to joelbaumgartnermd.com and join Reed Juve University for free. Thanks for watching.